Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. I've got three Colorado blue spruce here and I want to do something quite interesting with them today. These trees are not the exact trees that I was hoping to get. So I'm thinking, what can I do that's different and interesting with these? And what I noticed is they've got very long flowing root systems. And I thought, hmm, 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 interesting. You might notice I've got my seed propagation trays here. I'm going to be doing a video on uh, growing and developing Scots pines from seed. But back to today's video, if you look at the roots on this, they're really quite nice and long. And I thought perhaps with a spruce, I could do like a revealed root bonsai. That would be really interesting. But what I need are some long pots. I've decided not to bother with my new metal cutting disc. I'll stick with my diamond blade. What I've got here is a piece of the metal flue that I used on top of my log burner. And I thought if I cut this in half, that'll create two really nice plant pots. Make sure you use the correct PPE. Not my finest ever work, <laughs> but it's good enough. I've just been round and filed the top, removed all the burrs so that these are not sharp, so they're safe to work with. Now I just need to put some bottoms on them. I've decided to use self-adhesive scrim tape. This is the stuff I use when I'm plastering. It's, uh, it's about five pound a roll. And all you do is put it over the edge and just kind of stick it down. And I'll just go over that with several pieces. Just to create basically a bottom to it. I'll also use a piece of tape. So I'll run a length of this around. You can run this quite tight and it's relatively sticky, you know, it's not super sticky, but... It'll do just to hold in the soil. Just to secure it, because I'm not sure how well this will deal with the weather. I'll go around with some good old duct tape. And that should see, that should see a year out easy that now, no worries. That wasn't too tricky, but it was a bit of messing about. And I think the ideal solution would be square section uh, downspout that you can buy from building yards. I think I'm going to get some of that and cut it into lengths in future. And they could all be stacked together as well. But this is all I had lying around, so that'll do the job. Plus, I wasn't using that tubing so I do like to recycle. Now on to these. I need to select two of these three. Obviously I'm only doing two, the other one can just get potted up. And I need to pick the ones with the best roots. Of course when I say best roots I don't mean necessarily the best roots for a tree. I mean the best roots for this technique that I'm going to use. And the idea is that I'm going to create an exposed root. So what I want is to remove the major tap root in the center. Now, if I remove the tap from this one, there's not that much root left. So that's not looking ideal. I might come back to it. Ah, this is better. This has got lots more finer roots and it's just got that one major tap root down there. So if I get rid of that, We've got a really nice root system there for an exposed root. So that's perfect. And now for this last one. Oh, this is good again. We've got lots of roots coming from all quite high up. And then we've got that one big tap root. So oh, that was lucky. I didn't work that out. That was just by chance. I hadn't really looked at them. 
perfect. So we've got these two now, and each one's going to go into one of those tubes, but I don't just put them in the tube. I need to do some work with these first. Big shout out to Eric at Bonzify. He's the one that I basically have learnt this stuff from. So he does it with pines. I think he does it with junipers. Um, I've never seen anyone do it with spruce. So this could be a bit of a test case. But the idea is that we create, that this is going to eventually be part of the trunk exposed all these roots here and in order to achieve that we get a piece of wire and then I wrap it around the roots kind of cradling the roots just sort of loosely like that I don't want to go too tight with them you've just got to create like a cage like that so I created a cage and the ideal thing then is that you you put some movement into the roots by for example going like that but I've got to be careful because that's bringing these bits here together too tightly. I don't want that. They've got to spread, otherwise it'll look no good. And I'm not going to go crazy with this. I think I could have done with a longer piece of wire, truth be told. So, and perhaps a little tighter at the top. So if I go tighter at the top, it allows me to extend the wire a bit, but also go a bit further down and not have to go as wide further down as well. There we go. That's better. And now I just try and put a simple bend in. So I put that bend in, and then after I put the bend in, I'll try and work these roots so that they kind of spread out a bit. And that's it. It's harder than it looks, this. Look, looks like it's dead easy when Eric does it, but I quite like that. I think that's quite good. And then I just basically put that in my, in my pot. So let's do the other one before I pop them up. For this second tree, I've got a longer piece of wire. I'll try and disentangle those roots a little bit like that. And then I'll keep that low branch because you just never know. It might come in handy further on in the design and there's no advantage to removing it now. So this is a slightly thicker wire. So I'm hoping this will give me a little more control over the roots once, the, once I've wound them up. So I'm just doing the same thing, coming around them, creating that cage. But I'll, I'll try, because this is a thicker wire, I'm hoping I can create a longer, slightly looser cage. Like that. Yeah, it's definitely a longer wire is better. And I'm going to go for a more twist on this, definitely. More twist. And I'll try and manipulate these to a much greater extent. So, I'll go for I'll go for a turn that way. And then perhaps 
on coming back like that with even a twist that way. There. So I'm, I'm doing the same thing that I would do with a trunk, but obviously I'm doing it with the roots, which does feel kind of weird, but that's the technique. Now to get them in some soil. I've got my two pots ready to go now. I'm not going to add too much soil to start with because I want to be able to put the plant in position and then pour the soil around it. I think that's the kind of idea. I'll start with the shorter, a kind of shorter tree. And if that's going in something like there, I need to cut those roots. So if I imagine that about there, I just take those off like that. I then place that in so that all that wire pretty much is underneath the soil. And I'll then fill in around it. I, I've not thought this through though. I can't keep bending down to do that. So, I've got my only soil here and it's just one handful at a time and I'm supporting, obviously I'm holding the tree in position that I want it so that those roots are now tucking down and they're going to the bottom of the pot and I'm just filling around. With the next tree, I'm going to change the angle so you can see from the top what's actually happening. I mean, it's not hard to imagine what's happening, to be fair. But it's nice to see, nonetheless. And then once I get to this stage, I think I need to just prod this soil down with a chopstick. Just like this. Yeah, and that's really going down really nicely. So with a bit of luck, this is all working its way down in between those roots in the cage. As I give it a tap, the level's dropping significantly. And I just, I just love this kind of experimentation, you know, trying these new techniques. Eric's had some amazing results by doing something similar to this. He creates some awesome trees and ah, perhaps it works with spruce. If it did, the potential is that I could create something interesting out of some pretty mediocre trees. I'm now going to do the same thing with the other tree, except I'll change the view so you can see and look down as I'm doing it. With the same process now, and it's I'll just cut those roots down as I did with the first tree, just so that they're not too long. But they go quite low down into the pot, which is what we want. This now goes down. Really, really pleased with that interesting shape I've got there. Obviously, because I bent this, the roots are not as long so there'll be more room for growth. But again, I want to get the top of this, the root base, down. And then I just do the same thing. Keep pouring this soil in. And it's my normal bonsai mix, pretty much, but with some extra perlite in it, and not quite so much pine bark. But it's going to have really good drainage. I think the roots down there at the bottom will really like it. And then as this starts growing healthily, the idea then is that as the years pass, I start to remove some of this soil and start revealing those roots. That's the basic idea. 
Right, now for the tap. See, that should really get that, this soil into the roots. I think I'll try that again, because that worked so well. There we go, lovely. Can even lift it up just a touch. And with a bit of luck now, we're all systems go for an exposed root spruce. Now how interesting will that be? I've not done a lot of work with this particular variety. This is a, as I said earlier, this is a Colorado blue spruce. I think it's Picea pungens glauca. These were a gift off my dad. He was so appalled at the state of my other drills, he just had to buy me some new ones. <laughs> the tree's fairly unstable in that loose soil until those roots sort of set in place. I thought I'd I thought I'd just drill some holes like that so I can put some wire through and just support the tree. I just thread this piece of garden wire through the sleeve. It's just to protect the trunk, that, that's all. I've applied the first two pieces of wire, one here and here and one here and here. So the tree's been pulled that way all I need to do now is apply the final piece, which will create a triangle and that'll support that really nicely there. The hardest bit's getting this wire through this hole. Ah, oh, there we go. That's good. Now I've got both wires through. This one will pull that nice and tight there. I can just twist the two wires together like this as if I'm what putting you know wire into the bottom of a bonsai pot and I do the same technique I just pull and twist and that is surprisingly well held now that uh, there we go so that tree is far far more secure now it's going nowhere and that's got a much better chance of those roots staying in position and growing healthily. I've done the exact same thing with this second tree and I'll just pull it in nice and tight like that. That really does secure it well. And it's like anything this, the more you do it and the more you practice something such as this, the better your technique gets and the neater your work becomes. And that's rock solid in there again, beautiful. That third spruce is just going to be potted in a normal way, so I won't bother showing you that. If you want to follow the progress of these trees, uh, I mean, I think it's so exciting seeing what's going to happen as I reveal these roots. Subscribe and follow me content. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.